Okay, so I wanted to do a comparison uh, between alcohol stoves using different types of fuel. Um, you saw our video a year or so ago where we took a paint can and put toilet paper in it and used rubbing alcohol as an emergency heater for your car in the winter. And I guess you could also use that to heat up food, but that really wasn't its purpose. It was mainly um, an emergency heater. Well, today we're going to compare the Espit um, alcohol stove using rubbing alcohol and using denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is the preferred method. Um, I'm going to show you why here in a second. I originally thought that rubbing alcohol would be fine and that's turned out not to be the case so let me just show you they have these covers this is a uh, an Espit brand it's about 15 bucks it's an alcohol uh, stove and it comes with this cap so you can keep the alcohol in there and it has a little o-ring in it so that closes up like so and then this kind of nests on top of it and it also serves as the extinguisher for the for the flame. Obviously, you can't blow that kind of a fire out, so you need something to extinguish it, and that's what they give you. Um, so, at any rate, here let's compare the the two different types of fuel. So, we're gonna light the rubbing alcohol, and believe it or not, let's make sure that that's lit. I believe it is. So now, with these alcohol stoves, the point is that once this thing heats up in a minute or two, it heats up to the point where um, the alcohol starts to kind of percolate out, and you see these holes on the sides. The alcohol starts to come out of those holes primarily, and it acts like almost like the burner on your stove. Um, so there's a whole science to this, and I am not an expert, but I know enough about it to know that it's a pretty effective method of cooking with. And as you can see, okay, we just got the rubbing alcohol to kind of flash over and operate correctly, where you don't have, see, and it's going back and forth. Normally, you don't want a big flame out the center. You want it to start flaming only through those little holes. Now I tried this last night outside and it didn't work very well um, and frankly it's not working super well right now. Uh, the denatured alcohol is acting similarly right now but it seems to be operating a lot better. It seems to be a better flame and it does seem to be coming out the jet holes a lot better. This one's working, but if I pull back you can see the difference between the two. It's a pretty substantial difference. Um, so I've got these alcohol containers pretty far back there, but I think I'm just going to scoot those back a little bit further just to get them out of the way. Don't want to have any accidents here. So, by comparison, the denatured alcohol is definitely performing better. It's more consistent flame, and it's a hotter flame. And, honestly, I think what's happening is, I think it is coming out only through the, the holes in the burner itself, rather than the center. And the way this works, you, you have this open top, and... You pour the fuel in there, of course, when it's not lit, and what happens is you have a little pool of the water, I'm sorry, of the alcohol directly down into that opening, 
but it's also, I don't know if you can see this, but this center goes down and it's, there's a chamber all the way around. So the alcohol level is even all the way throughout this. Um, and then this burner extends down in and what happens is as the alcohol heats up, it almost percolates out or vapors out these holes and that's what gives you the burner effect. Um, so when that burner is, is running, you shouldn't be getting a lot of flame out the center, which is what we're getting out of the, the isopropyl. It, it doesn't seem to be consistent. It uh, definitely seems to be burning more out of the center. And that's because, you know, you've got that pool of alcohol in the center. Well, as opposed to that, we've got the denatured alcohol. And I can see pretty clearly that there isn't... Uh, although you can't hardly tell because the flame is so big, it's not coming out of the center, it's coming out of those uh, those ports. And that's what you want. You want it to be coming out of there. So again, if I pull back, there's a distinct difference between these two stoves, and the denatured alcohol is definitely a better type of fuel for these. There's a website, and I'll put the link to it down below, where they very exhaustively go through the different types of fuel, which ones are better, which ones are cleaner, which ones you want to avoid. And isopropyl, they, they don't recommend it. And I guess it's for obvious reasons. It's just not performing well at all. So anyway, there you have it. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out, and it's not a factor inside right now, and I guess I'll use this, I'm going to put them both out just to be safe. But I, I bought one of these Coughlin folding stoves. And you can use these for the Coughlin brand gel fuel, which is kind of a alcohol gel similar to Sterno. And you could also use twigs in there, and it's just kind of a... a kind of an emergency stove that you can use. And what's nice about it is it folds up. So I will take a spare one while I'm showing you that. And I'll show you how this folds up real nicely into a little package. So you can't really see too good in here right now, but this is what it looks like when it's folded up. So it folds flat. You've got the grill top on top, and if you just kind of let this drop open, you can see that it it all kind of unfolds. And then what you do is you put it together like so, and you could either put solid fuel or whatever type of fuel you want in there and then put your pot on top. So, you know, I think these are probably going to be hot still. Let's see. Amazingly not. Yeah, okay. So this isn't too bad. I should probably, yeah, I'm just going to put that in there. And I'm going to close this up. folding stove using an alcohol stove inside of it. And the reason this is nice is, and you can't really appreciate it right now because we're indoors, but last night I, I tried the stove outside and it was, the wind was blowing and it was kind of a mess. Um, but as you can see, this is very effective, very, uh, good sizable flame there and it's evenly burning through those holes in the burner um, you know if you didn't know any different you'd think that was the burner on your stove and it's operating in a very similar manner um, now they do say 
that this top can be used to kind of calm the flame down. So let me try that. What you do is you just, I'm going to be able to do this effectively on the camera, but you kind of move this off to the side. So then you end up with this. And that's supposed to be a way. Got to be careful here because they say these Coughlin stoves, they'll collapse on you if you're not careful. And I don't want to be careful about that with an alcohol stove. But this here is supposed to modulate that flame. So we're going to see if that actually works. Okay, so it does calm the flame down a bit. So I guess if you wanted, you could use that to kind of simmer it down. But here again, you've got a good sizable flame. And this Coughlin, which is not made for an alcohol stove, again, it's made for their product. But it's, it's a very similar type of arrangement where they have a can. Um, so you can see where this would be a very useful stove and how it would work pretty well. So that's what I did. I, I, I got the alcohol uh, stove and I got the Coughlin collapsible stove to be the windscreen and pot holder or pot stand for the top of it. It is a little heavy um, so you wouldn't want, you know, a lightweight backpacker wouldn't even be thinking about this. I don't know if they'd use an alcohol stove or one of these MSR type stoves. Um, they get pretty particular about the weight of things for lightweight backpacking, but, you know, it's, for my purposes, this is pretty, pretty darn awesome. You got a decent flame, a decent portable unit, and again, I mean, the Coughlin stove here, the folding stove is a little bit heavier than, say, a titanium or aluminum ring that some people buy for this purpose, but... You know, it's all your personal preference. I think this is going to be perfect for my needs here. But there you go. The comparison between denatured alcohol and rubbing alcohol is quite profound. So, denatured alcohol, that bottle was about 7 bucks from Home Depot. Isopropyl alcohol, I forget what that was, about 2 bucks or something. Um, but you're definitely getting more energy out of the denatured alcohol. So that's what I would recommend as well as the website. I'll put the information down below. Check it out. And thanks for watching, guys. Take care.